Hi there and welcome to Gina's Pro Tips. This is Kathy Drew from Gina's Bernina Sewing Center in Knoxville, Tennessee. And today I want to introduce you to my good friend Kathy Carlson. Now Kathy and I have worked together on Gina's uh, quilt clubs that we used to do. And she would do a wonderful program for us. And our ladies absolutely loved having Kathy come in and do her program. So uh, she did these wonderful boards. And Kathy, you want to show them that this is just an example of some of the boards that she used to do for her presentations and we have women that will take photographs of these so they can do the same thing she's got them done so beautifully that they can take a photograph and go home and copy these blocks that she's done so Gina and I were thinking she would be perfect to have some videos for you guys to view to where you can always look back at them and have them as a resource in your collection. So, Kathy, mm -hmm. we are so thrilled to have you. Thank you so and much. And I am going to let you just take over with okay. all of this. All, all right. right, I'll put this back for you okay. and let you get started. Well, today I'm going to start a series of things that disappear. It's not magic, but it kind of seems like magic because you take a simple block you cut it up, you rearrange it, and great things happen. So today I'm gonna to start with the four patch. Okay, so you start with a half square triangle, four of them. Now, there are a lot of ways to make half square triangles. You sometimes find a pattern that asks you to cut triangles. Well, the problem with that is when you cut triangles, to make a half square triangle, you've got these bias edges and they can stretch and cause a lot of irritation. So it's better, and this is the way I learned probably from you, Kathy. <laughs> I learned to, to do it so that you get two at a time, not just one. Now, also, I have learned from Kathy to use Terial Magic. This stuff, it's not a starch, it's a stabilizer. And it's just great because here is without Terial Magic, and here's with it. Yeah, it's limp, isn't it? Just limp. Just limp. So this makes all the difference in the world. And your uh, bias edges don't stretch. Pardon me? Your bias your, edges won't stretch. And when you cut they those. won't fray. That's exactly right. So you've got fraying here. You don't have any fraying here. It Perfect. is magic. Mm -hmm. And it comes with a spray attachment, but it's even better if you use this diffuser. Mm -hmm. I love using this diffuser. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Let's begin here with making a half square triangle. And I'm going to make it with um, a square, two squares. Mm -hmm. The rule of thumb, there's some math involved. The rule of thumb is you add seven eighths of an inch to the finished square. So this would be, if this was, a seam was here, this would be five inches. Mm -hmm. So you add seven eighths of an inch. Now, I like to add an inch because I never met a half square triangle that couldn't be improved <laughs> by squaring up. That's right. So I'm going to start with a six inch square, right sides together. I have um, drawn a line, corner to corner. Sometimes you could just press a line. I find that be difficult. I'm having vision issues. The drawn line is better for me. And I have stitched a quarter of an inch on either side in black. Now, I wouldn't normally do this for real because if you have black thread, dark thread, and a light uh, background, when you go to quilt that, those pesky black threads are gonna show through and you're gonna be sad. Mm -hmm. So you need to use a color that's the same color as your background. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am going to, you can uh, use a rotary cutter. I'm gonna use my Karen K Buckley scissors. These are the best scissors. They have a serrated edge. They're just great. And they come in uh, several different sizes. So I'm gonna cut this apart. Okay, so I've, I've cut these in two, I'm gonna, Press to the dark side. Now, because I have put Terial Magic on this, I can almost finger press that flat, almost flat. So then you just put your iron on. And I don't like to use steam. I just use a dry iron and get that pressed really flat. So let me do the other one. You want to share with them why you prefer not to use steam? I don't like to use steam because sometimes that can distort the shape. Perfect. And uh, so there I am just pressing it with my fingers and then the iron. Okay, now I'm gonna square these up. So to square them up, 
you need a ruler with a 45 degree angle. I think they most all have 45 degree angles. I like creative grids because they have real thin lines. Mm -hmm. And um, I have put tape where I want the square to be so that I don't have to hunt for it. Oh. I've got the tape here and here, which will show me where I need to locate the square so I get it trimmed down correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me put that 45 degree line right on that seam line and make sure I've got a little bit of the square showing on all four corners. And then I'm going to take my rotary cutter. I have learned that I really like this 28 millimeter cutter. I feel like I have more control with it for mm -hmm. some reason. So, um, And that rotary cutter is also good for cutting out garment patterns oh, when you have a yeah. small size okay. like that too. Good to know. Okay, so I'm going to trim this down. And that's all, this is all that I trimmed off. Can you see that mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. It isn't much, but it makes a big difference mm -hmm. when you're sewing it together. Okay, now turn it around. Now I can line these edges up right with the tape line. It takes a little bit to get it just right. And then I'm going to trim again. And again, there's not much that comes off, but it does make a huge difference mm -hmm. when you're sewing it together. And you want to share with them why you like to square up the individual components of the of the block? Well, I like to square them up as I go because everything you do makes a difference. If you square it up here, if you waited to square it up here, this would be cattywampus. Mm -hmm. You could do it, but it wouldn't be yeah, as good. You'd be stretching and you'd be pulling, stretching and pulling. That's to right. try to make it work. So it's best to square up your components before you construct the block. So I'm not going to square this one up again. I forgot to mention that um, creative grids have these uh, rough spots mm -hmm. that help with the, keeping it in the place. I, I, somehow I am very heavy handed with my ruler, so I put some true grips mm -hmm. on the back and that, that really helps, mm -hmm. the, helps me. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, put these together like it would be a pinwheel. So we're gonna go dark, light, Dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. There's your pinwheel. Now, you could have gone light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. And I'm going to come back to that a little bit later. So let's get this um, stitched together. I've stitched two together. And I have again pressed to the dark side, stitched the other two together, pressed to the dark side. And because I have pressed to the dark side, when I put these together, there they go. When I put these together, because I pressed to the dark side, it's going to nest. Mm -hmm. And that makes it a lot easier to stitch. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to cut this in thirds. Now I have. My unit is ten and a half inches, which is easily divisible by three. Mm -hmm. If it's not easily divisible by three, I would trim it down. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use my Creative Grids ruler again with the rough spots, with the true grips to help me keep it secure. And what size is that ruler, This Kathy? is the six by twelve. That's such a handy it's size. It's a very handy to have. size. It's the one yeah. I use the most. Yeah, especially when you're you you know working on your. Uh, your blocks, you know, it's so much easier than the big six by 24 inch exactly. that we use for strips. Exactly. So I'm going to cut from the center. So I've got my strip on one and three fourths inches. I'm going to put this right here, line it up as carefully as I can, and make the first cut. Now, you're going to cut on all four sides, and you need to keep the pieces together, mm -hmm. which makes it very handy to have this rotating mat. Mm -hmm. So I line it up again. Now if you don't have a rotating mat, if you have a small mat, that would work. Mm -hmm. But the rotating mat is Yeah, is I, I think that's something everybody should eventually add if I you're a quilter. So. Get it Once gone. you have one, you'll you, wonder you, why you didn't get it sooner. Exactly. Okay, now I'm going to turn it again and cut again. And 
one more turn and cut again. Okay, now that we've cut it in thirds in every direction, now we have a nine patch. We have nine separate pieces. And now the fun begins. Oh, this is the best part, isn't it? This I is love the this best part. part. Oh, cut these blocks up afterwards. Okay, we're going to reposition your camera. Okay, so here's our nine patch. Let me pull it apart. Now, in order to rearrange it, I always have a diagram so I don't get mixed up. Mm -hmm. So let's see what's going to happen first. I am going to turn these pieces, these triangles, so that they are next to the center. And, see, I almost had that one wrong. It's hard. And I have a friendship star. The diagram star. is such a good idea. It's a good idea. Yes. So let's put the rest of them in here. And this goes this way. And this goes this way. And this goes this way. You can see it would, if, without a diagram, it would be easy to go like this. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, what have I done? Mm -hmm. So here we have a friendship star. That diagram is the, is the best. Cool. That there now. It is a friendship star. That is if, so pretty. I like that one. If we Ooh. change this just a little bit by turning this here. Turning this here, turning this here, Little turning one. this here. Now we have a whirly gag. A oh, whirly gag. That is so pretty. Isn't that pretty? Oh, the yellows and the blacks and the grays are so pretty. Okay, let's see what else we can do. Let me turn these corners like this, and like this, and like this, and like this, and then like this and like this and like this and like this oh my goodness and now we have a shoe fly that is amazing all from all from your pinwheel, has pinwheel. To be a triangle pinwheel yes. amazing okay now here was my shoe fly let's just do it a little different let's turn these into the center like this like this, like this, <laughs> and like this, and voila, that a churn dash. That is amazing. Now, early in, in the video, I said you go dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. Mm -hmm. What if you go light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, mm -hmm. light, dark? Okay, you will get the reverse of that, which is going to look like this. Turn that to the center, turn that to the center, turn that to the center. Turn that to the center. Turn this this way. Turn that that way. That way. And that way. Oh my gosh. Now, what if you had a quilt that had blocks like Two that? Two of those. Wouldn't that be good? Amazing. You can take that one block, cut it up like this, and make a whole quilt. Exactly. Just doing that. That's amazing. Exactly. So let's. I love it. Wait, there's more. Uh, there's, there's more. more. There's more. I can't get. I get excited when you start doing this. Yeah, so now let's do a flower basket. I'm ready. Okay, so I'm going to put the flowers up here. I'm going to take these triangles and do them this way, and do this one this way, and do this one uh, this way, this way, this way. And one more. Let's see. Is it that way? Yep. That corner. Oh, it's in the corner. Yeah, it's this way. It's this way. So then I'm going to do, let's get these lined up. That. And that. And that. And that. And that. Flower basket. That's amazing. And, and again, you could do the light, dark, light, dark, and have... Uh-huh, the reverse the of that. The reverse of that. Yeah. Turn, let's turn that. I think they can see it, though. Turn, let me turn it this way just oh. for a second, and then we'll okay. turn it right back that, so they can kind of see it's kind of reversed on the camera. Isn't that amazing from that one block? That one I'm block. so impressed. 
Now, here's a design idea. If you were making a whole bunch of these, mm -hmm. you could have a different colorway and switch out your flowers oh, and yeah. make it even better. Okay. Even better. Okay. Now, all these are sort of traditional. Mm -hmm. This next one is a little less traditional, okay. maybe in the modern category. Okay. So we're going to turn this uh, this way, mm -hmm. and we're going to turn this one this way. Mm -hmm. And we're going to turn this one this way, and we're going to turn this one this way, okay. and now we're going to do this, and this, and we're going to do this, and this. Oh my gosh. Now I you've got it. arrows. You sure do. That's amazing. Wait a minute. That's Wait not a minute. right. Yep, yep. See? There you go. That's why. How cool! You that's why you have, have a, a diagram. You gotta have a diagram. That's look right. at that. So, so I don't know if you all see. Every time she gets to it, she's got herself a diagram of everything because it is so easy to flip those pieces in the wrong it is. direction. It is. I do that on a basic block, so I know I do it on now, that. Now, if you do, you could wind up with a new variation altogether. Well, yeah, you could. You could get more. Yeah, it could okay. make you really, really creative. So. All of these, and we'll show all of them at the end, mm -hmm. are with the same two pieces of fabric. Mm -hmm. So what if you used more fabric? Good, good. That's a good thing to show. What cool. if you had this? That let's is turn, so pretty. Let's turn this into something else. I'll so do. Let's, let's, go. Do. let's do let's that. Let's just turn it into something else while we're just looking at it. And this goes here, and this goes, that stays that way, and that stays that way, and this goes yep. here. Perfect. And this goes here. Cool. If you want to, you can turn that center. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's move that back over in the middle a little bit so we won't miss anything. Think of this one with all different rainbow of colors. Okay. Okay, so this next one is going to be even more of a rainbow of colors possibility uh -huh. so let's do this and this uh -huh. i'm going to make the arrows again if you okay. can see what i'm doing here okay here it goes here and <laughs> i know <laughs> and there it can get you twisted there cool now Think about that in a variety of colors mm -hmm. with the arrows going one way and another. Yes. The arrows going oh, one way imagine? and another. That's amazing. That'd be so you know, beautiful. I really love seeing this chartreuse green with this aqua. I mean, it is sometimes so hard for people to imagine the right green to go with that with that color. And I'm so glad you did a block in that. And yeah. I love these variations of the background. Yeah. That's just beautiful, Kathy. So many good ideas. It's amazing. It's just so much fun. It is so much fun. Let's show them one at a time. Just show them back to them what okay. you've come up with. All right. If you don't mind. Let and me put the, oh, I'm going to step over here. And you go right ahead. Okay. So. We saw that beautiful piece. And we then. We started with a friendship square. Yeah. There you go. That was the first one that we did. That's the first one. After she cut up her pinwheel into nine blocks. Nine blocks. Mm -hmm. And then we turned the corners mm -hmm. a different way. And you got that one. And I got, got a whirly gig. My goodness. Then we turned them a different way. And we got, I forgot what this one's called. Uh, oh, well, don't ask me. I'm, I'm in a blank too. Well, we'll come back to we'll that come one. back to that one. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah. We'll just set that over there, and you can come back to it. We'll look it up. And then there's your arrow. Shoe fly. Shoe fly. There you go. It's a shoe fly. I'm going to put it back over here. All right. Shoe fly, because if you turn that a little bit different on the corner, you get a churn dash. Perfect. Okay. Then, if you do the, this is dark light. If you do light dark, you get the reverse. Uh-huh. Beautiful. Perfect. I and love it. Yes. A, a less traditional one are the arrows. Mm -hmm. Well, and the flower basket. Yes. Well, actually, that's more of a traditional one. I put it is, but that's okay. that's okay. That's okay. Perfect. And then 
using different colors. I than love it. I love it. Thank so you, it is just so much, much fun. fun. Okay, I meant to say with especially with these traditional blocks, you could do a really pretty sampler quilt mm -hmm. with different colors or all the same color but different patterns. Mm -hmm. It just there's just an amazing amount of ways you can use these this disappearing pinwheel. So here again is the disappearing the first disappearing pinwheel board that I did. That's great. Kind of a summary there. Yeah. Let me look at it one more time. If you no, you just hold it up for him because look, that gives you the complete way to do how right. she did the cutting. And right. then a couple of let's see, three different there's, uh, there's four different four different. Yeah, that it is shows, so cool. It shows where to cut it, mm -hmm. what happens after you cut it, and then mm -hmm. rearranging it. Mm -hmm. And you've got you've got them numbered. That's just to show you, you know where they went. Where they went. Isn't that cool? See how these boards are wonderful? That's why everybody comes in and photographs Kathy's boards. And they go home and then they bring in these beautiful quilts that they've done. Here's another one. This is the flower basket. But we're going to try to cover a lot of the boards that you've made for us in these videos yes. too, are we? Yes. Perfect. So here's the idea of a, a different center, mm -hmm. different set of flowers. Okay. Again, it shows where to cut, mm -hmm. what it looks like after you cut, put it back together. Yep. At a different center. And that's just with the pinwheel block. That's just the pinwheel block. And she block. showed you the flower basket in, in what she did. Where did it go? It's right there. 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 So, so that's great. Oh, I just love it. And I love your boards. Here's one more. These are the arrows. These are all, let me take this fabric off. Okay. These are all a different color because the fabric was oh, wow. all these different colors in oh, one piece wow. of fabric. Look at the arrows, how beautiful that was. Yeah, can you see that? I love that. Cool. Again, you have the lines, you cut on the lines, you rearrange. That is so cool. That's amazing, Kathy. It's a, it's a magic. It is a magic, magic total magic. That is fabulous. We so appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right, so I want to remind you guys that... Um, you can find any of the notions that Kathy used on our website yes. at genusbernina.com. And uh, a lot of people have uh, commented that they're not that savvy with going on websites and doing ordering and things like that. Uh, so if you want to give us a phone call about and ask questions, don't hesitate to call us at 865-966-5941. And also you can email us at info at genusbernina.com and just reference the video. And um, if you have the name of the product, that'll really help us. And we'll ship to you just whatever we can do to help you. I had a great time and I hope you all did too. I hope you did too. Come back. I'm going to have Another disappearance. Yes, she next is. Time. Who yes, knows what's going to disappear is. next time? You never know with Kathy, and she'll have a wonderful board for you. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Appreciate you so much. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.